We are here today at our leadership uh, seminar, Philosophy and Practice, with one of our beloved moderators, Ruth. Thank you so much for taking the time and also for um, being available for this interview. Ruth, the world around us is changing um, on an al almost daily basis with so much more um, uncertainty, um, a crisis at every corner. Um, there seems to be sometimes a lack of leadership or a lack of good leadership. In these troubled times, what kind of leaders do we need? It's a, it's a big question. Um, clearly, we're looking for values-based leaders and we're looking for leaders who are able to access the values that drive them and are able to articulate those values. But I think what is also really important at the moment is leaders who are able to take a pause and who aren't rushing to conclusions and who aren't rushing to public statements. I think we all have to be able to take a step back occasionally and take our time. And when the outside world is really difficult, that's more important than ever. Um, there is a, there's a really good essay by Keats, the poet, um, and he writes about where he gets his creativity from. And he talks about negative capability And negative capability is the ability to bear not knowing, to be able to live with not knowing. And I actually think a lot of leaders need to hone their ability for negative capability. So need to be able to actually bear the fact that sometimes we can't know. And at the moment, it's one of those times. Well, thank you so much for uh, sh sharing that with us. Um, you have made it one of your life missions <laughs> um, to foster good leadership, to foster values-based leadership. You do it in your work at the university, but also you do it in your work in leadership seminars like ours. What made you decide to travel that journey? Um, it comes out of my own professional experience, to be honest. So I was working as a senior executive in a large retailer. Um, and when I took the role, I hadn't really understood how much leadership ma mattered and how much good leadership mattered. And I was reasonably blasé about the ideas. As long as I do my job well, we're going to do good things. Um, and it was only after a change in senior leadership that I realized how important it was to me um, that the people I worked for created an environment where we understood values and where that was part of a clearly expressed leadership vision. Um, in my experience, few people have the opportunity to take some time out and really consider what they hold most dear and what is really at the core of their beliefs. Um, this is such a wonderful opportunity to take that time, to create that contemplative space. Um, and I... I consider it a huge privilege to be involved in creating those spaces. And as you say, um, you can do it on boards by creating a governance culture where people take the time to think. Um, you can create you can create it individual relationships. And this is definitely one of my favorite ways of <laughs> engaging in the whole conversation around what it means to be a values based leader. And you have um, helped to create our um, Espen Germany Leadership Seminar. And what is your favorite part about it? <laughs> well, there's a secret part, which I won't share. <laughs> no, um, I actually think the very first five minutes are my favorite first five minutes. So as you know, we send out these really substantive readers and there's some very challenging texts in there. And I think a lot of the participants sort of think we're not really going to go there. And then in the first five minutes when everybody's sitting down and we've set out the rules of the road and we've given a little bit of context, uh, one of us will go, so what does Aristotle think about happiness? And you can just feel it in the room how everybody goes, wow, we're actually going to do this? We're actually going to read Aristotle? And yes, we will. And I really like that moment. <laughs> I had that moment too <laughs> when I participated for the first time as a participant. Last question I want to ask you, do you have a favorite philosopher? Wow, do I have a favorite philosopher? Um, I'll pick an old one and a new one. Yeah. Um, so 
every time I read the texts we use here, I read them anew. And I think there is a huge amount in the philosophy of Immanuel Kant that is important for us today. And it's, for me, at the root of what I believe about human dignity. There's a lot of things that are really difficult, so I don't want to say that there aren't. Um, but that idea, that fundamental idea of human rights rooted in the idea of human dignity really appeals to me. Outside the canon of what we read, my current favorite philosopher is uh, a, a German philosopher who's teaching in, in, in the United States called Yasha Monk. Um, he is a political philosopher and he writes about the rise of populism. Um, he also writes about identity politics and the way in which the extreme right and the extreme left are actually reinforcing some of their narratives at the moment. And I find that really interesting. Thank you very, very much. And um, I hope that you will um, continue moderating plenty of seminars <laughs> with us. Thank you so much, Ruth, for your time, your engagement, your enthusiasm, and also all your insights. So do I, Stormy. I hope I'll be coming back here a lot. And thank you so much for creating the opportunities. <laughs>